And this one, let's take a look at finding the following limit here. The limit is n goes to positive infinity of the square root of n plus 1 minus n. That's our objective. So to do this, first of all, we have to make a preliminary observation. That observation looks like this. Let's say this is step 1. So step 2 basically says, if I actually try to replace n with a very, very, very big number, let's pretend it's infinity. It's going to be kind of like this. It's going to be infinity minus infinity. But you have to be really careful because this is a statement about limits. So when you encounter something like this, you might for have to usually work on this expression and rewrite it so that you avoid like infinity minus infinity. So to do that, let's go through that process. I'm going to put here n plus 1 and then here minus another n. And I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, basically. So parentheses and what I'm going to put within the parentheses, despite appearances, please remember it's just a form of the number 1. In mathematics, you're allowed to multiply by a form of the number 1. So in this context, that form will look like this. You're going to take n plus 1 within the root symbol. And then instead of putting a minus here, I'm going to put a plus and then plus the root of n. Remember, you have to have a form of the number 1. So on the bottom, you must put the same thing, n plus 1 and then here plus the root of n. So this expression within the parentheses, despite its appearances, remember, is just 1. Okay. So the next stage is actually work this out. I'm going to multiply the tops out. So the second... This one right here, like this, this is a 1 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top cell. I'm going to multiply as follows. This, the root of n plus 1 times the root of n plus 1 will give you the root of n plus 1 squared. So whatever this is times this is there twice. So up here you have a 2 in that position. So, so far I've done this portion. Now I'm doing this multiplied by that. So that's going to give me the root of n times the root of n plus 1. Then after that, I'm going to do this one times this one right here. Again, you see? So now I'm multiplying the negative of the root of n by the root of n plus 1. That's going to generate the next one. That's going to give me minus n within the root symbol times n plus 1. And at the end, this will generate following. You have the root of n negative here multiplying all the way to the root of n positive. So that's going to give you the root of n squared. This times this, you square that. So that's just the top multiplied out. We have to simplify this expression, okay? Let me make a note that this is just the top. So when I work this out, I have the root of n plus 1 squared. That's going to give me the following. This cancels with that. It leaves just n plus 1, like that. These two in the middle cancel off, and they cancel off because one is positive and the other one is negative. They're identical except for the signs, so they're opposites. They go away. The last term, you have, again, the two will cancel the root, and you're going to end up with minus n. So when you simplify this, you have n plus 1 minus n. This n cancels with that n. They're opposite in sign, so you end up with positive 1 for that reason. All right, awesome. So now we can rewrite our limit over here at step 6. So it kind of looks like the following. Take a look. Step 6, I'm going to take the new top, which is 1. I'm going to put it over the new bottom. The new bottom is this bottom from step number 3 right here. So it becomes the root of n plus 1 plus the root of n. And then you put the limit in here. Limit as n goes to positive infinity. And at this step, usually people are not so formal anymore. So what I mean by that is... You basically pretend to plug infinity into these. You could be very formal and distribute the limit to the top, to this term in the bottom, to that term in the bottom. A lot of people don't do that. They simply say, okay, I'm going to pretend to plug infinity in as if it were a number, even though it really isn't, but I pretend. So it looks like this. I'm going to say the following here. The root of basically the following, infinity plus 1, <laughs> and then plus here, infinity. Well, as you can imagine, the 1 in the top stays. Infinity plus 1, that's still pretty much infinity. The square root of infinity is still infinity. So it ends up being kind of like <laughs> infinity overall in the bottom, okay? Once you handle these expressions in the bottom separately, I'm not being super rigorous here, but what you end up with is infinity. And the 1 over infinity, so to speak, in the long run becomes 0. And this is the value of the limit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. I've shown you, I think, a reasonable amount of detail here. I'll see you in another video.